Today, millions of PCs will suffer. AMD's already lowering prices. Intel's entire next-gen desktop CPU lineup just leaked, and this will change gaming GPUs forever. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, when Microsoft originally announced their Windows 11 operating system, they had some very odd hardware requirements that at the time meant that even fairly new CPUs wouldn't be able to update. Luckily, they kind of quickly backtracked on some of those or at the very least, they allowed CPUs that didn't necessarily meet them to sort of install it, but they suggested that you don't and they more or less stopped you altogether. But then quite a bit of workarounds happened Happened that allowed users to still update to the new operating system. Well, it looks like Microsoft is now seriously cracking down on this in what I would call a very odd and just downright not good move by the company. Microsoft has actually patched the TPM 2.0 bypass that as it says, prevents Windows 11 installs on PCs with unsupported CPUs. As you can see right down here, it says many users with officially unsupported PCs could successfully install Windows 11 using a trick that circumvents its hardware requirement verification process with a slash product server command line. It gave many older PC owners a new lease of life, i.e. they were able to install and properly use Windows 11, but... Microsoft has now done away with that, specifically in their new Insider build 27686. You can see that it effectively blocks this trick, meaning Microsoft is now actively, which they've sort of closed off some things in the past, but now it really seems like they're pushing hard to force everyone to either upgrade their hardware or just not install Windows 11. You can see right here that there are other methods, but some have been patched, such as this pop CNT restriction that was implemented just a few months ago. When we look down here, you can actually see the screenshot that was posted. It says this PC can't run Windows Server. The PC must support TPM 2.0. As they state further down here, yes, Microsoft hasn't actually mentioned it. And while it was so far only found in the Canary build, it will likely trickle down to future releases. Meaning if you currently do have older hardware that doesn't support it, I mean, we're talking as recent as first gen Ryzen and Intel seventh gen CPUs. So this really isn't all that long ago. And yes, you could argue when it comes to PC hardware, that's like an eternity ago, but really it isn't. The average consumer isn't going to be updating their PCs every one or two years or anywhere near that. So the idea that everyone should have updated, at least to me, is pretty absurd. But of course, let me know what you think down in the description below. And next up for today, AMD's new Ryzen 9000 series haven't exactly been well received. And because of that, it looks like AMD is already dropping prices. But first, if I can learn it, so can you. That's the mantra I have with today's sponsor. Brilliant, the online learning tool that was made to teach the STEM field. So whether you want to learn computer science, math, or science, Brilliant is the way to go. Specifically because they teach you the way you're meant to learn. By actually doing it, don't just read or talk about it, get in there and do it yourself. And the best part is that you'll actually have fun doing it with Brilliant's engaging interactive puzzles. Whether you want to learn all about how modern AI works, check out their new course on creative coding, or learn how to make your very own search engine. Brilliant as something for everyone. If Brilliant can teach me, they can definitely teach you. And today, when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld or use the QR code, you'll get a 30-day free trial. And when that's up, you'll get 20% off your premium membership for life. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMeld or use the QR code. Now back to the story, as you can see right here, it says AMD's Ryzen 9 9900X. So we're talking part of the newest CPUs, not the 9700X or 9600X, has dropped below MSRP in Europe less than a week after launch. And in fact, that isn't the only CPU that's gone down below MSRP. As you can see right here, this isn't just one retailer or anything like that. Several German retailers, along with Austrian outlets, have reduced the price of AMD's Ryzen on 9900 x down to 499 euros, implementing up to an 8% discount from the official MSR 
XRP. And then not only that, like I said, there is more because at other E retailers with the 9700X, it's down 5.3% and the 9950X is down 1.5% as well as the 9600X down 3.3%. Basically, this isn't just some bubble with reviewers complaining about these CPUs or anything like that. This is actually translating into a loss of sales. And because of that, retailers are having to issue discounts less than a week before some of these have been released. Luckily, we have a news story that not only gives us the release date for Intel's next-gen desktop parts, but we also have the entire lineup that just leaked as well. As you can see right here, this leak originally comes from the site benchlife.info and is later reported by video cards. And as you can see, these are Intel's Core Ultra 200 series. Don't forget that their desktop lineup is now moving to the Core Ultra branding. So think of these as their 15th gen CPUs. And starting things off, as you can see right here, according to this outlet, the Core Ultra 200K arrives October 10th. More specifically, you can see right here, it says it's revealed that Intel's plan for the Core Ultra 200 series is set to launch the first models on October 10th. So these are likely the higher end K SKUs, the 285K, 265K, stuff like that, like what we've normally seen from Intel. But also, like I said, we now have the specs for the entire lineup. And starting things off, we have the 285K. This is, of course, their flagship model that would be replacing the 14,900K. And as you can see, comes with a 125 watt CDP and a total of 24 cores. When it comes to clocks, this is pretty interesting. We have the base clocks for the E cores at 3.2 gigahertz, the base clocks for the P cores at 3.7. Then we have the turbo clock for the P cores up to 5.4, but the E cores up to 4.6. But with all these turbo boost overdrive extra plus 3.87, you get the picture. It gets all the way up to 5.7 gigahertz. And of course, if you're paying attention to all of this, you might notice that that's a fairly decent dip of 300 megahertz of the current max turbo or thermal velocity boost frequency of six gigahertz on the 14,900K, meaning that there is in fact a clock regression with their new CPUs. And of course, if you've been following the channel, that really shouldn't be much of a surprise to you. And if you like hearing all about PC hardware news before anyone else, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Meld. And of course, if you are subscribed and you already knew this, you likely also know that the efficiency cores frequency for the base and turbo clocks have actually gone up. You can see right here that the 285K, the base frequency is 3.2 gigahertz, yet the 14,900K, the base is 2.4. So obviously that is a pretty big boost in base frequencies there. And then the turbo frequency went from 4.4 to 4.6. Not only that, but the base frequency of the P core also went up a little bit from 3.2 to 3.7. Now I do say a little bit, but that is actually quite a bit. And this, at least to me, shows me that Intel's new CPUs are quite a bit more efficient. With that said, while it is impressive, I'm really not so sure what to think. Don't forget that going from the 13,900K, we can see that right here, the uh, efficient core was at 2.2 and then it moved up to 2.4 and then the efficient core uh, turbo frequency went from 4.3 to 4.4. So it actually already went up at least a little bit, obviously not as much of a difference as we're seeing here, but we really didn't see much of an increase in performance going from the 13,900K to 14,900K. And with the fact that the absolute best of the best, we're talking, you know, the boost frequency of the P-Core actually saw a regression that really does have me worried. Then when we move down there, you can see we have the 285. This is a 65 watt model. This one, I will say, did reduce clocks by quite a bit, though, the non-K models of last gen did also reduce them by quite a bit. Once again, basically all of these look fairly okay, but of course we really can't completely compare these to last gen just because this is an entirely new architecture. So we're really just going to have to wait and see. Please don't also be a disappointment like AMD.
And lastly for today, Windows PCs have finally gotten a serious ARM CPU, thanks to Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite chips. And while yes, the gaming performance really hasn't been all that great, it honestly is a very decent contender that both Intel and AMD should seriously worry about. Well, it looks like Nvidia now must share that fear, well, along with AMD and sort of Intel because ARM themselves are apparently developing a GPU in Israel. And we're not talking AI or anything like that, we're talking consumer gaming GPUs. As you can see right down here, it says UK chip giant ARM is developing a graphics processing unit in Israel that will compete with Nvidia and Intel, so I don't know why they wouldn't say AMD, but sources familiar with the matter have told Globes. ARM is estimated to be employing about 100 chip and software development engineers in its global graphics processing group at its development center in, well, in Israel. At this stage, ARM is reportedly engaged in graphics processing for the video game market. Now, before people get too excited, don't forget that Intel poured a ton of money into making their own discrete gaming cards and it hasn't exactly been all that impressive. Now, on the lower end, it really isn't that bad, but it also sort of looks like Intel may not be doing this all that much longer, so it is understandable to be a little apprehensive about this and not get too excited, but at the same time, as always, more competition, especially in this market, is always great. So while that does it for today, do you think ARM has what it takes to compete with the likes of Nvidia and AMD when it comes to gaming GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.